Welcome to the Model Health Show. This is fitness and nutrition expert Sean Stevenson here with my amazing co-host and producer, Jade Harrell. What's up, Jade? What's up, Sean? How you doing today? I am knowledge danger. <laughs> what? <laughs> I am using knowledge to be a game changer. Mm. Mm-hmm. I love, I absolutely love that. Really? That's incredible. Thank you. Can you say that again? Knowledge danger. Knowledge danger. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Well, today we've got an amazing show lined up for you guys. Uh, we're going to be talking about some actual real tangible strategies for fat loss. Oh. Okay. And we're going to be talking about, because we talk about a lot of nutrition mm-hmm. and because it's 90% of the game in my opinion, mm-hmm. but we do need to have the right blueprint for our exercise. Right. And so that's what we're going to be tying in today. We're going to be talking about HIT training, okay. a.k.a. High intensity interval training. Yeah, but right. it feels like you just got hit. <laughs> <laughs> and so you've had the experience of working with me during doing the hit training. Yeah, um, you brought that up. Yeah, I just remember that afterward, I sat in the car for a good twelve minutes because I was in shock, but I felt wonderful thereafter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it just took a minute to realize what had just happened. <laughs> it really is highly effective for transforming our our physical body. But the thing is, there's so many variations on this, and what I like to do is get right to the heart of the matter and share with everybody the most effective strategies. Cool. But you know how we also do it mm-hmm. on our show. We're mm-hmm. going to actually talk about why it actually works in nice. the first place. Mm-hmm. So we're going to get into conversation about muscle fiber types and all that mm-hmm. kind of good stuff. So sit tight for that. And we're going to close the show with 15 top ways to actually do the high intensity interval training. Perfect. All right. But first let's give a shout out to our show sponsor on it.com. Love it. Head over to O N N I T forward slash model for 10% off all of your health and human performance supplements. Mm-hmm. Huge fans of Hemp Force Protein. Yes, and I had my Choco Maca today in an extra size mm. smoothie. Getting so that good. deliciousness delivered. Mm-hmm. It was. I feel it now. <laughs> <laughs> so they've got the Choco Maca flavor. Mm-hmm. That's Vanilla me. acai. That's my favorite flavor. Mm-hmm. The reason that we love it, number one, it tastes amazing. It number really two, well, it's really... Well, I guess it's tied for number one. Okay. Is that it's the most bioavailable protein for the human body. Mm-hmm. So what does that mean? Well, you can actually assimilate it. Mm-hmm. It's usable. Uh, it's high in edestin and also a soft globular protein called albumin. Okay. And so albumin is a water-soluble protein. Mm-hmm. And what are we mostly made of? Water. Water. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So it's it very, matches. It's very digestible mm-hmm. and easy to assimilate versus some of the more conventional stuff out there sure. that has a lot of research backing up its 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 efficiency and efficacy for losing weight, gaining muscle, that kind of stuff. But does it feel good, mm-hmm. you know? And also, do you have to consume a lot of it? Because it's not very, very bioavailable. That's true. And so that's the difference with HempForce. You know, you don't have to use as much because your body actually uses it and it feels good internally. So huge fan of that. So also huge fans of the Earth Grow Nutrients mm-hmm. is the green superfood blend. And I truly feel that every single human being needs to be on a green superfood product today just because of the nature of the very acidic environment that we're exposed to externally and internally. Mm -hmm. You know, um, even if we're eating a really clean diet, some stuff can sneak in there, obviously. (laughs) Toxicity, uh, even, of course, heavy metal toxicity, for example. But what about the water that you're drinking? Right. You know, and the stuff we're exposed to in the water supply, which we did a great show about this. A master class show. Yeah. (laughs) So we'll put that in the show notes. But mm-hmm. also, of course, the air that you're breathing. It's not just you are what you eat. It's you are what you eat, drink, breathe, and think mm-hmm. as well. And I know? love the part about you are what you eat ate. So yes. whatever you're eating, if it was taken in the toxins, exactly. guess where it's going to go? Exactly. <laughs> Things bioaccumulate yeah. in the human body as you move up the food chain. Mm-hmm. You know, So this is why we need to be very diligent about having strategies like this. And just as simple as getting in a green superfood blend uh, like Earth Grow Nutrients mm-hmm. that's going to have the antioxidant Uh, formula in there, the green formula in there, it's going to give you that extra health insurance. It's just, you know, a scoop a day can be amazing. Mm -hmm. And it's, again, it's something that's using earth grown nutrients. It's not synthetic made in a laboratory by, you know, Stanley last (laughs) week. You know what I'm saying? This is stuff that's been around for many, many hundreds, if not thousands of years Mm -hmm. and cultivated and been proven to be advantageous to the human body. Right. Right. You know, so just get your hands on this stuff. Earth Grow Nutrients, Hemp Force Protein. Do yourself a favor. Head over and check them out. Onit.com forward slash model. Now let's get into the iTunes review of the week. Well, this is another five-star rating. Sean says, life changing from Josh in Tel Aviv. I am so grateful for this wonderful podcast. In the two weeks since I discovered the Model Health Show, my life and wellness have been changed exponentially for the better. 
Not only is Sean and Jade's delivery superbly upbeat, but Sean's advice is so doable. Just by making simple changes like switching whole wheat bread for sweet potatoes and turning off the computer an hour before sleep and drinking water as soon as I wake up, I look and feel better than I ever have before. May God continue to bless you and your families with love from the land of Israel. Wow. Oh, my. Yeah. <laughs> that is so incredible. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Thank you so mm-hmm. much for sharing that and just those tangible things, the application mm-hmm. of this mm-hmm. stuff. And wow, that really is powerful. It is. And and way to go, you guys, in painting the picture for us so we understand where you are and how we're connecting with you. Yeah. This means the world to us. Yeah. Thank you so much. And thank you, everybody, for leaving these reviews over on iTunes. Mm-hmm. Truly do appreciate it. And now let's go ahead and dive into our topic of the day. (laughs) (laughs) Today, we are talking about the top 15 ways Mm -hmm. to do high intensity interval training. And we're going to walk away with some real tangible strategies, things that you can apply to your life, new exercises that you might not have considered before. But we're going to talk about also why it's effective. And that's really where we're going to start. So HIIT training, it's become pretty popular now. And the question is, why is it so popular? Mm -hmm. Well, because... It's effective. Mm -hmm. You know, it's effective. We're circling back around, looking at evolutionary biology and like, what is a human design, you know, really, really really made for, Mm -hmm. you know, and um, conventional cardio. What I believed and what many people believe when they want to lose weight or to lose fat is that you need to do a lot of running. You know, you need to do a lot of jogging, you know, slow. We call it chronic cardio, (laughs) you know, so you need to hop on the treadmill for an hour or go Mm -hmm. run for 45 minutes. And you need to do that in order for you to burn fat. Mm -hmm. Now, the reality is that this is not true. This is just not true, especially for sustainable weight loss, because what we're looking at is the hormonal benefit. You know, how is it impacting your hormones? Because as soon as you stop running for that, you know, mini marathon you're doing, trying to do (laughs) multiple times a week, if not every day. Mm -hmm. And by the way, it has its place. Let me say this. If you if you love to run and if it's meditative for you, have at it. Right. But what we're talking about is what's most effective for fat loss, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so if you look at the hormonal impact, this is where the real, it's gonna tell the real story. So when you stop running, you know, many people find this, when they stop that consistent running, they start to gain weight very quickly, Oh yeah, right? So we wanna defend, we wanna create a condition to where it's hard for you to get out of shape, Exactly. right? So we need to look (laughs) at what it's doing to your hormones. I want that to be a problem. (laughs) Man, I just can't get out of shape. (laughs) Exactly, exactly, it's so hard. Right. It's a struggle. Baffling. Could you look at that? Would you look? Just have a look. Look at it. Now, <laughs> one, of the imp- one of the impacts is, number one, it's more of a catabolic type of exercise. Mm-hmm. Okay, So what does that mean? Catabolic means breaking down. Mm-hmm. Okay, And also what that parallels with is the secretion of more stress hormones, mm-hmm. namely cortisol. Which we right? don't want running through our veins. And if we're looking at evolutionary biology and the mm-hmm. way that your body's wired up, when you're running for long distances for that amount of time, Your biology doesn't know whether or not you're running to go and try to catch your food, trying Mm -hmm. to track your food down, or you're running from something. Right. But your your biology is probably just like, this fool is going to get caught. He's going to get eaten. (laughs) You know, why is he still running? Uh You know, because it's very energy intensive in in a strange kind of way. So what your body's going to do, and this, again, this is based on evolutionary biology, it's going to try to retain fat because it can use it and burn that slower. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's going to try to burn off. And this, of course, it, this is not immediate, right. but at a point, it's going to start to burn off your precious, valuable muscle. Uh-oh. And why this matters is that muscle is your body's fat burning machinery. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Muscle is your body's fat burning machinery, but it's very expensive for your body to hang on to there because it burns more calories. Mm-hmm. Right. And so if your body, based on evolution, it's it's concerned with I need energy. to retain mm-hmm. as much energy as possible because there's some stress yes. going on because he is still running. Right. She is still running. We've got to throw some of this right? weight off. Yeah. We're going to throw some of this muscle off. Yeah. And so it processes like gluconeogenesis can take place where cortisol, this stress hormone, can literally start to break down your muscle tissue and turn it into glucose, mm. turn it into sugar. Great. And guess what happens when glucose gets secreted into your body? Well, it Insulin to... turns on. Yeah. Right. And when insulin turns on, it's going to be getting stored potentially as fat. Right. Okay. Because our body loves us and wants to protect exactly, us. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. But we body. believe that we just got to keep on going, keep on mm-hmm. running. Mm-hmm. And again, for some people, it, and it depends on your genetics a little bit, you <laughs> know, it definitely plays a factor to how you can adapt to this type of exercise. But for the most part, people are going to find it more advantageous to do HIIT training mm-hmm. as their quote cardio 
instead of the long kind of chronic cardio that we already talked about. Sure, sure. So when you say hit, what exactly does that mean? <laughs> so we're going to we're going to break that down, okay. the high intensity interval training. High okay. intensity interval training. Yeah. So it's two eyes. When we get into, yes, H I I T. Right, like a serious hit. Yeah. <laughs> like a left and a right. <laughs> Thank you for clearing that up, baby kids. I appreciate it, honey bun. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. again, this goes back to the efficacy. We got some love going on here today. I'm we matching you. a little bit on Chaco accident. Maca, right. You know? Accident on purpose. Yeah, you didn't mm-hmm. call me like, so what you wearing? Right, like right. You know we're supposed to be purple today. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, Do you have your black and white hat? Okay, cool. <laughs> so the human body, the efficient design of the human body, we're designed for of all the different types of exercise. And we're going to throw out some pretty amazing exercises today, but we know for certain that we are designed to walk, right? Mm-hmm. Squatting with 300 pounds on our back, that's questionable. You know, we are designed to squat mm-hmm. to get up and, 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 and to squat down and things of that nature, but mm-hmm. to actually throw a big load on your back, not necessarily, right. but it, it, of course, it has tremendous amount of benefits, mm-hmm. but we know for certain is that we're designed to walk mm-hmm. long distances slowly. Nice. Okay? We're also designed to move very quickly for short periods of time. Okay. And that story is told in our muscle fibers. What we have as human beings, those muscle fibers tell us what we're designed to do. Sure. And so the human body itself has around 450 muscles that we can use voluntarily. Ooh. Okay. 450 muscles that we, we have can use actual voluntarily. control over. Yes. That's and not then, bad. Because there are some that are involuntary, like I your know, heart, I for know. example. I'll I don't want that, that responsibility. I really don't. You know? I'm so unreliable. <laughs> and with that, we have over 250 million muscle fibers. And In this, the 450? We have over 250 million muscle fibers. Oh, my fibers, goodness. Okay? That's and like 250 for each million listeners we have. And so. I have a muscle fiber for each. This is what actually (laughs) holds the key for fat loss, is being able to tap into and to manipulate your amazing muscle fibers. And so this is where we're going to shift the conversation to. Let's talk about these different muscle fibers. Now, I'm going to make this as as simple as I can, but there there are some complex pieces to this, but I just want to give people the general overview. Mm -hmm. So we've got different muscle fiber types. Okay. okay? So we've got type 1 muscle fibers. We've got type 2A type 2X, and type 2B. Now, most people have probably heard of type 1 and type 2. Those are the outgoing ones, like, <laughs> with the best so personality. we've basically got these two different categories, but the type 2 has subsets or intermediary muscle fibers is what we call them. Mm-hmm. All right, so let's start with the type 1 muscle fibers. And I'm going to talk about the contraction, the endurance, the max duration of use, the strength, and the velocity, okay? So for type 1 muscle fibers... These are the slow twitch muscle fibers, okay? Their endurance is very high, okay? They can go a pretty long time. You can walk for hours and hours and hours. Uh, The max duration of use is hours. (laughs) And the strength is pretty low, okay? It's low strength. The the velocity, the ability to generate power is low. And now also I'm going to throw something in here that's important. It's the motor unit that's involved in slow twitch fibers. And what a motor unit is, basically, it's one neuron attached to a certain amount of muscle fibers. Okay, How many muscle fibers is one neuron controlling and firing at one time? So the, the motor neuron, I'm sorry, the motor unit for the slow twitch fibers is going to be around 100 or 150 muscle fibers that it's impacting. Okay, This is important. This is the key here. Okay, So we're going to come back to this. Mm-hmm. Then we've got the type 2A, and this is one of the more intermediary so the endurance is fairly high, okay? So this is going to be the max duration is less than about 30 minutes. Okay? These are still <laughs> type 2 fibers, but mm-hmm. they can't be used a long time. Okay. Okay. The strength is intermediate. Mm-hmm. The velocity is intermediate. And the motor unit is a medium size, okay? Now we get into more of the, quote, hybrid type muscles. And, and type 2A is in there too, but type 2X is known as a hybrid muscle fiber. So the, the contraction, it's fast. This is a faster twitch mm-hmm. muscle fiber. Okay. The endurance is intermediate. This is going to be less than five minutes max duration of usage for these muscles. <laughs> less than okay. five minutes. Okay. The strength is high. I bet. The velocity, its ability to generate power is high. And the motor unit is large. Okay. Now, this is what people think about when they think about the type 2 uh, muscle fibers. It's type 2B muscle fibers. This is, the contraction is very fast. Mm-hmm. Very, very fast. The endurance is extremely low. It's going to be less than one minute that you can use these muscles without them failing. 
the strength is very high, velocity is very high, and the motor unit is very large. Mm -hmm. So in contrast to the slow twitch fiber where we've got one neuron attached to maybe 100, 180 mm -hmm. muscle fibers, this is one neuron attached to upwards of 800 mm -hmm. muscle fibers. Okay, So when you're able to engage these muscles, they're going to be impacting a lot more of your muscular potential. Right, right. They've this got is a the bigger key. machine to move. This is the key right mm -hmm. here. All right. This is like unlocking. I mean, we feel I feel like we're hacking into something here. This is powerful. Yeah. Exactly. That's exactly what it is. So what we're breaking down here is why this is so effective. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's a good overview on the muscle fiber type. And what we want to focus on is that motor unit mm -hmm. of the fast twitch muscle fibers and utilize that to its best advantage. Now this is why this is what it includes. I'm going to share a little bit about what it includes and how this is how this is actually working. Okay. Okay, so a process number 1. It's called glycogenolysis. Mm. Okay, glycogenolysis, not to be mistaken with glyconeogenesis. Genesis, right. Okay, they're pretty close. Mm -hmm. Glyconeogenesis is the conversion or creation of of new sugar. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this could be from your muscle tissue or from breaking down protein. Okay, so glyconeogenesis. So not that this is glycogenolysis. And this is the breakdown of glycogen for us as energy, okay? This is the breakdown of, of glycogen for us as energy. So in particular, we're talking about our muscle glycogen, mm -hmm. you know, where your body's going to store, quote, sugar, right. right? Right. So that's number one. It's going to help to break down the process because, and why this is important is that once your muscle glycogen's full, liver glycogen gets full, then eventually your body starts storing a lot more fat. Mm -hmm. So we want to get rid of those reserves so that we can exactly. basically re refuel. That makes okay? sense. And this is the most efficient way to get rid of it. Okay. What is? HIIT training. Okay. <laughs> H-I-I-T. Okay. H-I-I-T. So I need to know which twitch goes with that T. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> All right. It's either going to be slow just, twitch or high or fast twitch. I thought about twerking. I don't know. <laughs> twitch twerk is very close. No, I very do close. like that too. There's got to be some value in that. So. High intensity twerking. Twerking. Mm. We, we might have to make a video. All right, so uh, that's number one, glycogenolysis. Number two is it restores insulin sensitivity. Let me say this again. Okay. It restores insulin sensitivity. And that's a good thing. This is, in, this is incredibly good, all right, because insulin resistance That's right. problematic. That Nobody classic sign anything. of insulin resistance is belly fat, okay? So when we improve our insulin sensitivity, this mm -hmm. is going to help to target specifically that problem area for a lot of people by doing this. Okay, and by the way, it improves and restores insulin sensitivity with the muscle via the muscles in particular, but your whole body. Mm -hmm. Right, very powerful. Yes. Uh, number three, muscle glycogen gets cleaved off on the spot. Okay, when you do this type of exercise, it gets cleaved off on the spot and quickly gets metabolized as energy within the same cell. So why this matters is that it's for on-site use only by that muscle. So when you're using that, uh, when that muscle glycogen gets uh, gets released, mm -hmm. it's not going to end up getting recirculated and absorbed on your butt later. Okay. <laughs> right. So it, it's for on-site use That's only. one muscle area. I would like to not have okay. a bunch of that going on. So <laughs> very powerful right there. And the next thing is, and this is probably the last thing I share, is that uh, the glycogenolysis this is the same process that activates something called hormone-sensitive lipase. So throwing, throwing, like I said, there's a lot of technical stuff it's here. Okay, but it's okay. It's okay. Hormone-sensitive lipase. This is an enzyme. This is so important, guys. I remember lipase. Hormone-sensitive lipase. Mm -hmm. This is the enzyme that's responsible for the metabolism of fatty acids. Okay, so basically breaking down your fat stores and using it as energy. Okay, so this process of HIT activates hormone sensitive lipase okay so literally breaking down fat and using it as energy all right Ooh. now this the opposite of that is lipoprotein lipase and mm -hmm. that is something that causes your body and we've talked about this yeah, on past shows that's what it, why it sounds causes familiar. your body to store excess fat mm -hmm. right so mm -hmm. hormone sensitive lipase is going to be working more efficiently by doing high intensity interval training powerful stuff and you know what i'm going to throw in one more little bonus thing and I'm not going to break this down because it, this is definitely something more complex. But people can, I talk about this more in depth because it's something pretty visual mm -hmm. that if you see it visually, it would help a lot. But uh, in my program, The Fat Loss Code, I actually mm -hmm. take you into my, uh, into my dojo, mm -hmm. into my <laughs> office and break out the whiteboard and actually show this particular mm -hmm. process. It's called an amplification cascade. Okay? And this is what's achievable by doing high-intensity interval training. And basically, to make it short and sweet, the amplification cascade 
essentially blocks your body from being able to store excess sugar for upwards of, you know, maybe even a whole day, mm-hmm. but many, many hours. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it blocks your body from having the potential of storing more fat. Okay? Nice. Powerful, so powerful. Mm-hmm. But this is the difference between doing this type of exercise and doing, you know, long duration, slow cardio, which I'm not talking about walking. Walking is excellent. Mm-hmm. But doing that kind of chronic jogging, right, where one of the things we, we didn't mention is what about overuse injuries, mm-hmm. okay, that kind of banging on your joints over and over again. Right. And, of course, we talked about the, 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 the atrophy. And, of course, we talked about the breakdown of your muscle tissue mm-hmm. as well, but also the catabolic hormones that are getting produced. If you're walking for long distances of time, you know, a nice leisurely walk, Mm -hmm. you know, and throwing on a podcast, Mm -hmm. this is one of the most beneficial uh, types of exercise for overall well-being, but also for fat loss, too, because you're doing that cardiovascular movement. Mm -hmm. At the same time, you're not going to be secreting a lot of stress hormones. Exactly. As a matter of fact, you can produce more of these kind of advantageous, um, you know, endorphins Mm -hmm. consistently. You can hit that runner's high. Absolutely. People know about that. Mm -hmm. But it ends. You know, when you're done working out, it's done. It's done. Okay. You're, you're, you're spent. Versus doing HIIT training when you're done working out, this is going to last for many, many hours afterwards. Sure. All right. So. Well, I'm glad you explained all those benefits because now I don't feel so badly about how <clears throat> really intense, like the I in intense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a capital I. This is the key. Let's talk a little bit about that. Like, why don't people do this? Because and it's real. Now, <laughs> now that we know what it is. Yeah. I want um, it now. And, and, people, and people see others doing this, you mm-hmm. know, on YouTube and on uh, different videos and things of that nature and articles out there. There's a lot of information talking about how effective it is. Why mm-hmm. are people not doing this? Um, what we really need to look at is is fear, you know? Yes. Because, of course, if an individual is maybe 100 pounds overweight mm-hmm. and they're just like, I cannot move all this that fast that you want me to, mm-hmm. and I'm not going to get out and start running. I'm not going to get out and sprint. There are so many different applicable methods mm-hmm. for you to be able to, to add this into your life. Sure. Number one, but number two is we have to be willing to do what we can, mm. okay? And this detachment from being able to mm. move quickly is, the, is, is a detachment from our humanity. Yes. It's a detachment from what, where we really come from. So children, if you ever watch a child, <laughs> they only have one speed, and that is fast. Right. You know, I, just, I was watching my son yesterday. I, was, I had just come home. I was sitting down, and he was just going to his room to get something. He went as fast as he could. Like, he's bit cutting corners. I'm nervous, <laughs> you know? And he was just going to get something, come back. Yeah. You know, he went to get something else, come He sprints. Mm-hmm. He's not walking. Mm-hmm. But as we get older and older and society starts to kind of bear down on us, we mm-hmm. stop moving quickly. How often know? do we say to children, slow down. Yes, exactly. Watch out. Exactly. Yeah. And be careful. Mm-hmm. And there's, there is, of course, there's a, there's a difference between being, you know, excessively risky and risking your life. Sure. And just having that audacity Mm -hmm. to be free and to run and to play, you know? And some of that audacity lends to their instinct because as they go, you know, they'll get a feel for that proximity and when to hit those turns and the breaks and all those highs and lows. And so, you know, instead of atrophying that capacity, it would sharpen it, I would imagine. Absolutely, Mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. And we've got to return to that because if you are listening to this, you still have the capacity for so much. Yeah, you do. You still have the capacity. You've got an amazing body that's been very good to you over the years. Yeah. It's time to be good to it and get a return to youth. Because mm-hmm. what it is, is when you start to get into this place where we're not moving quickly, it's getting away from our youth. Right. Right? Wow. And this wasn't necessarily something we consciously chose. Mm-hmm. But we can consciously choose to change that now. We can. You know? So be smart. Yeah. Absolutely be smart, but yeah. be assertive. Exactly. Be assertive in your life. Right. Now get up and go get some water real fast. <laughs> <laughs> Come back before we start so, the next point. <laughs> the whole issue is this, is that doing the high-intensity interval training, you have to force a hormonal shift to take place in your body. You've got to be willing to go 120%. Mm-hmm. Put, and it's just a short, very, very short time frame right. you know, to, that makes it more comfortable psychologically like I can do this for 10 seconds I can do this for 20 seconds right but this is contrary to the idea that we've got to go and run for 60 minutes which more people are comfortable with Mm -hmm. well more people that that's their area they're comfortable with but for so many they're not which then ends up putting us back in that stagnation cycle 
and we resist the opportunity to get out there and get at it. So yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And for the so, majority, for a good majority of us. So before we get into these 15 amazing strategies for high intensity interval training for fat loss, I want to make sure that you're in the best condition to get the results that you really deserve. So make sure that you're physically fit and capable of doing this. Always consult, consult with a doctor or physician of some sort to make sure that you're up to par um, with your with your level of, of capacity to do this kind of training. And also, I would highly recommend working with a coach to get instruction, make sure your form is right, because as hard as you're going to be going, you don't want to start breaking down in your form because that can lead to injury. So let's go ahead now and get into these 15 different strategies for high-intensity interval training for fat loss. And so I've got to put this caveat before we're about to get into the 15 different ways, but okay. this important caveat, which is, if you can even do this for over 60 seconds, you're probably not going intense enough. Oh. If you're doing any of these exercises for more than 60 seconds, okay? And they're different, again, if we're talking about hitting those intermediate muscle fibers, that's wonderful. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about the best way. The best way is things that are going to get you to fatigue within under a minute. Right, right? because that was the, the motor unit. and No, no, that was the max duration. Yeah. So we need to go on and get there. So we, I want to put that caveat out there and understand we're going to be talking about different methods today, but the most effective one are the ones that are going to get you down under under a minute. It's going to right. get you. It's I should be you. able to endure 60 seconds of pretty much anything. Yeah. But the <laughs> other stuff is going to be, there's there's value in it too. So let's go ahead and dive right into All right. these. So now let's get into the top 15 ways to do HIT training, <laughs> high intensity inter- interval training for fat loss. I want it. I'll pay. All right. So number one. <laughs> And this is probably the most obvious for people and what people are going to tend to think about is sprints. Yeah. Okay. So sprints, that's number one. And this is going to be using, and there's different ways of even doing all of this stuff. There's many different capacities, but I'm going to try to be specific and just hitting a couple points. So sprints, this is going to be using actual intervals. Okay. So actual time intervals or segments of distance. So segments of time or segments of distance. So a great uh, interval training for sprints would be, and by the way, so for the individuals that are wanting to do sprints, and this is my fate, this is the absolute number one way to burn fat, in my opinion, mm-hmm. as far as exercise is concerned, is doing sprints. So the, the workout itself won't take that long, okay. maybe 10 minutes. Right. What you need to spend time on is warming up, is getting your body prepared, doing the uh, preparation exercises, you know, the, the, the calisthenics and things of that nature. So, you know, the high knees and the and the backwards running and doing some lunges, doing some mobility work, get your body really prepared to go 100%. Okay. Okay? So. I like that. Sprints, that's number one. And here's a good uh, framework, and this is one that I did um, a few months back with my with my son, which he was right on me, my right. 14-year-old son. <laughs> and my, my three-year-old, he had just, I think he had just turned three, mm-hmm. and he did every single rep with us. I could not get him to not do it. Right. It was so amazing. It was, per- it was natural. And it so. Was natural. We did uh, six rounds. Oh, actually, we did seven. Seven rounds of 100-meter sprints, which went to a track. We did a 100-meter sprint, all out, everything we had. And then we just walked back to the start as slow as we wanted to. Okay, so our time, our segment was distance. Mm -hmm. We used distance as a segment. So I've also done this with 200-meter sprints, where I do a 200-meter sprint, then I walk the 200 meters. Once I get back, I hit it again. You know, maybe Mm -hmm. do four rounds of that, five rounds, six rounds. (laughs) <laughs> uh, very, it's very, very difficult. You know, once we get it, even we're talking about these hundred meter sprints, you try and do, you know, 10 of these right out of the gate. Mm-hmm. It's very, very hard. Yeah. You know, you start experiencing that lactic acid. So I like the <laughs> sweet spot is right around five to eight repetitions is, is what I feel. I don't really feel you need two? to do of the hundred meter, okay. meter sprint, hundred meter sprint. And then what about the two? The 200, three to five. Okay. Okay. So you don't need, it's not about quantity it's about right. quality right go as hard as you can so that's I number one it. number one is sprints uh, number two is for the individuals who might be dealing with injuries or they just have a lot of body mass to try to move around right now a great alternative is using a stationary bike mm-hmm. or a recumbent bike this is where the ones where you can actually sit down it has a back to it and you get your roll on mm-hmm. you get your roll on like that so so using the stationary bike that mm-hmm. takes out a lot of the potential for things going haywire with your form mm-hmm. right because it's something you got to be conscious of if you're sprinting is not breaking down mm-hmm. right so with the stationary bike you're just pedaling you're it's controlling the motion that you can take mm-hmm. right so would so that be time or distance you can do either okay. okay but i i prefer for the sake of ease is to use time okay 
So here's a couple of great strategies. Um, starting out, you do a three minute warm up, okay? And with you can check out the RPMs on the bike. So maybe you wanna be over 75, 80 for your warm up, okay? And do a three minute warm up. Then we're gonna get into our intervals, all right? So one great strategy is doing a 20 second sprint on the bike. So when I'm saying sprint, that does not mean you're getting off the bike and going sprint. I'm talking about you going as fast as you can right, on the bike. getting those revolutions. 20 second sprint and then 40 second recovery okay high intensity interval training so these mm -hmm. are intervals mm -hmm. okay what about the rpm when you're on the sprint as fast as you can go so for one person it might be 120 and another person okay. it might be 140 Whatever but as fast as you can move for the full and by the way seconds. you want to add a little bit of resistance to that because chances are you're going to be um generating too many it's going to be a little bit uh out of control um, because even though the, the stationary bike is con controlling your movement, if it's too mm -hmm. loose, yeah. yeah, it can be a little bit wonky. So right. um, add some <laughs> resistance there as well. Sure. So 20 seconds on, 40 seconds recovery. But not a hill. No, we're not. We're, we're, yeah, you're doing this a yourself. Something, and not, there's I mean, programs the incline, There's programs right. on different bikes that you can set it to do intervals for mm -hmm. you. Mm. But so 20 second sprint, 40 second recovery. Okay. And basically what that is, it's a one minute set. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then the next, after that, 40 second rest, you go again. Yeah. Okay. How many of those? So, five, again, depends on where you're starting off. I'd say five to eight is a sweet spot mm -hmm. again. All right. So, that's one method. Another you know method. I'm writing sweet spot on the sweet <laughs> spot stuff. Another method is um, 30 second sprint mm -hmm. on the bike and then 90 second recovery. Okay? That's like the 200. Mm -hmm. And so, what we really want to do here is understand that. When you're doing these sets, so just say you get to your, your fourth set and you've already, you're experienced doing this and you've got, you're doing eight today. If you're at four and you're not thinking psychologically like, I can't do eight today. <laughs> like you're not going hard enough. You need to be questioning yourself, you know, like you need to be going so hard that you're just like, I, I can't do it. Right. But you do it anyways. Right. You still do it because you can, you got to dig down We've got to force this hormonal shift. You've got to go. On, go. But the thing is, again, it's just a short duration. Right. We're talking but minutes But everything here. you've got into that, because what we're doing is also going to be uh, with the amplification cascade that I didn't talk about. It's so exciting. I want to talk about it. But releasing uh, adrenaline. Okay. And that can go and cleave off like a tremendous amount of this stored glycogen like that okay. versus like it being like a one-to-one -one thing. If you're just mm -hmm. jogging along, mm -hmm. it takes a longer process. You're going to be triggering a lot of different enzymes to go and start cleaving off a lot of this stored stuff, right. potential fat. Right. Right. Well, then let's sign everybody up. <clears throat> All hands on deck. So that's number two <laughs> in our 15 different ways to do HIIT training for fat loss. So now let's get into number three on our top 15 ways to do HIIT training for fat loss. Number three is something classic. You know, shout out to Rocky. Yes. Shout out to Carl Weathers. <laughs> that's right. You know, <laughs> his 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 uh, arch nemesis who mm -hmm. became his friend mm -hmm. in the movies. But jump rope. Yeah. Jump rope. Oh. All right. So that's number three on the top 15 ways to do HIIT training for fat loss. Jumping rope, there's various methods to do this. This is classic. It's cheap. You don't need a lot of space. Right. You just get yourself a jump rope mm -hmm. and you go for it. All okay. right. And so there's, again, there's a lot of different ways to do this. One of the most effective ways that I found, and again, you got to learn the skill. you got to be physically capable of doing this. So if you're not able to do this, don't worry about it. Just work on the skill set of just jumping, mm -hmm. you know, just doing regular jumps. So but you can get there. A, jump, a jumping rope doing something called double unders. Okay. <laughs> this is where you do two revolutions per jump. So you jump and the rope goes under you <laughs> twice, right? So this is something that will probably tire you out a lot more quickly and get oh, us yeah. under that 60 seconds. So you can time yourself, you know, and uh, or set a timer to do, you know, um, 30 second fast jump and then you rest for 30 seconds, you know, or you do double, double unders for um, maybe 20 reps and then you rest for 20 seconds. There's a lot of different ways to play with this, but what we're doing is just talking about the, the top ways of doing the HIIT training. Love it. All right, so mm -hmm. that's number three. Let's move on. This is like a gold mine. Here. I know. <laughs> so we've got, we've got several more to get to. So uh, number four on our list of the top 15 ways to do HIIT training for fat loss is something called Fartlek. Okay? Yeah. Fartlek. <laughs> Let's make sure the we name clarify. It's funny. It's F-A-R-T-L-E-K. Uh, One word. Fartlek. All right? <laughs> And this is a Swedish word for speed play. Okay, it's okay. a Swedish word for speed play. Funny name, fartlek. Let's get it all out of your system. Yes, we got. I know. Be we're more so mature. immature. We're Come so on. Immature. <laughs> 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 he said fart. <laughs> <laughs> so fartlek is a Swedish word for speed play. 
And that's really what it's all about. This is unlike interval training where we're focused on a specific time or distance. This is more um, just variation and and changing tempo and, and playing. So let me give some Soccer. examples. This would be a combination. So let me give an example. A combination mm. of walking, jogging, and sprinting. Okay. okay? And so... Maybe you're just you're doing this in your neighborhood, and you're just like, okay, I'm just gonna run to that mailbox, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna j- um, sprint to the mailbox, then I'm gonna walk up the hill, and then I'm going to just jog for, you know, um, for for five minutes or whatever. You maybe you keep in time, maybe you're not. Like, there's a lot of variation they can do here, but it's more about disconnecting from everything and just doing stuff, mm-hmm. right? And this is something that could be fun to do this with a group, mm-hmm. right? Where or one person is the leader, mm-hmm. right? The kids, I would, I would they'll be easy to do this, children into this, right? So, mm-hmm. and this is kind of what we naturally do. Like if I'm walking with the kids, we'll just kind of naturally start playing. Right. We'll do some sprints and run from each other and then we'll walk and then, you know, it's just like, I feel like jogging, mm-hmm. you know? So it's more like that. It's called speed play mm-hmm. for a reason. It makes sense. The word play is key here. Now you're gonna remember this. So you're hanging out with your friends and all of a sudden somebody says, Uh Uh-huh, exactly. (laughs) Or last one is rotten egg, that kind of stuff. And then you just jump in and go for it. Exactly. I can have fun with that. Yeah. And by the time you're laughing that hard, (laughs) you burn up some more calories. (laughs) So this is, it's really as simple as that. Just changing Mm -hmm. tempo, doing a variation. It could just be you're doing jogging and then sprinting. You could just have those two tools that you're going out to do. Or it could be a combination of walking, jogging, and sprinting. Mm -hmm. But you've got to just make sure you throw some sprints in there. Okay. All right. So that's number four. Uh, let's move on to number five on our list of top 15 ways to do hit training for fat loss. Number five is called Tabata. Tabata. Mm. Okay, so that's T-A-B-A-T-A. Tabata. Tabata. And what this is is really simply it's 20 seconds of exercise and 20 seconds of rest. Okay. And the Tabata framework is just four minutes. It's just four minutes that you're going to be – and anybody, you have four minutes to do this. This is great. This is something really great to do in the morning. Right. It's part of your morning ritual to ter- just turn your body on, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and set your body in more of a, of a fat-burning mode for the entire day. So, sure. What kind of exercise? So this is a great question. So mm-hmm. there's a lot of different variations. What I prefer for people to do is to work on the same muscle group, okay? So it's going to be a lot more effective. So – Uh, Maybe with the Tabata, we're just going to focus on doing push-ups. Okay, so 20 seconds of push-ups, 20 seconds of rest. Then you go again, 20 seconds of push-ups, 20 seconds of rest until the four minutes is up, right? Or you can combine that push-ups and maybe dips. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're working on the chest, triceps, anterior deltoids all at one time, okay? So, but you can also vary this. You can do it using non-competing muscle groups. So that means if I'm using my chest and triceps Mm -hmm. for the first 20 seconds, when the next 20 seconds of exercise comes around now, maybe I'm using my legs. Okay. So now I'll do 20 seconds of lunges. So you can script this different ways. There's a lot of ways to play with this and have fun, but my preferable way to get the most hormonal bang for your buck is to focus on the same muscle group. Okay. Okay. So uh, maybe for the legs, we'll do 20 seconds of lunges, then rest, then Mm -hmm. 20 seconds of uh, maybe jump squats and then rest, (laughs) then 20 seconds of um, mountain climbers, no, we're going to no. focus on the legs, so that's more gotcha. of a core exercise. So right. 20 seconds of uh, maybe we go back to the lunges and we do, instead of forward lunges, we do reverse lunges, mm-hmm. you know, or side lunges. Okay. So that's my preferable way to do that. So would that be that. it for the morning, or do that, I need to do my four minutes? That's just something to add minutes? in. Well, that's just something to add in. This is one f- framework. Would I go four m- four minutes on legs and then four minutes on arms? Or you I can call it a to. day after you know, I do. It depends on what level you want to play at. I got, but we're talking about the minimum effective dose. Got you. you know, so you've got four minutes. Tabata's your thing. Get right? it. Yes. So that's number five on our list. Let's move on to number six on our list of top 15 ways to do HIIT training for fat loss. Number six is, I love this exercise, it's called squat press. Okay. And so the squat press, you can do this with dumbbells or with a barbell. All right. And so basically... You, you get your, we'll, we'll just say we're using dumbbells. You get your dumbbells, and you don't want to use something that's extremely heavy, but mm-hmm. something that gives, that's challenging to where you can't do a lot of reps without failing. So we'll just say um, maybe you're grabbing two 20-pound dumbbells, mm-hmm. okay? And you're holding it up in a shoulder press position. Mm-hmm. And you're going to squat down, okay? And then when you come up, you're going to do a, sh- a shoulder press, mm-hmm. okay? So you're going <laughs> to squat with the weight. You come up, you explode, and you do a shoulder press, right. okay? And so there's two different ways to do that. You can pause once you come up from the squat and press and then bring it back down, pause, and then squat. Or you can just go right into it. Okay. So I think I remember those. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. So you were more bru- you were very brutal. Those so days. squat press. <laughs> That's one of my favorite exercises. And by yeah. the way, so this is something you can do on reps or time. You know, like okay, 20, 20 reps, and I rest twenty seconds, or um, you just set the clock and do it for thirty seconds, and then you rest. But this should be really kicking your butt. Yeah. It does. Okay. So use the weight that you can't do this all day. All right. So squat press. Love it. All right. So let's move on. That's number six, and it's something again. If you got a couple dumbbells, you got hit training. Right. All right. And wh- why I chose it, by the way, is because you're utilizing upper and lower body together. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So more bang for the buck. All that right, one so actually feels really good. You feel I felt yeah. powerful. Yes. And agile yeah. doing that one. That started one from good. the bottom. Yeah. Now I'm pressed up top. Now you here. Now we here. <laughs> All right. So that's number six. Let's move on to number seven. Number seven on our list of fifteen ways to do HIT training for fat loss. Number the seven, ones. the top, T-O-P. That's right. Number seven is kettlebell swings. <laughs> kettlebell swings or circuits with kettlebells. And if you have not checked out the On It kettlebells that works from out. onit.com mm-hmm. forward slash model, they have got some, literally some beast level stuff. Mm-hmm. So when you check it out, and actually The Rock <sighs> from the WWE Huge movie star. Mm-hmm. He just uh, posted a, a picture on Instagram a couple of times of him using the on it, a uh, primal kettlebell. So oh the yeah, primal, yeah. There, there's four different ones, and so they've got the different weights according to the particular animal. So they're, they're <laughs> the, and with Dwayne Johnson, that's quite a beast. He was using the gorilla. <laughs> I right? bet. So the howler is like 18 pounds. Uh-huh. Okay, that's What's gorilla. For, that's How for high the, is that? Do you know? We'll get to it, baby. Okay. Slow down. <laughs> so the howler. Well, you said the rock, so. <laughs> Tell me anything about it. Oh, my goodness <laughs> Tell me anything. So the howler is 18 pounds. Mm-hmm. The chimp is the next level. That's 36 pounds. The orangutan, you're going to get 54-pound dumbbell. That's where a lot of people that are pretty experienced are going to be slinging that one around. But the gorilla is 72 pounds. Good. Right? Golly So you've got you to have your A game and your strength up to be able to utilize that. But have they've also got the legend that? bells, which is um, they have the cyclops bell and they also have um the werewolf bell oh so my. there's so many different variations and <laughs> it's just really cool and something that's just fun it just adds a mm-hmm. component of fun to your workout good. when you see yeah. these different things so <laughs> the legend bells and the primal bells so kettlebell swings the reason i chose that exercise in particular is it's just really metabolically difficult yeah. like it's just something that's it's pretty taxing but mm-hmm. please hear this make sure that you study and you understand the form of doing the kettlebell swing properly. Oh, I sure. just yesterday I saw somebody doing this wrong and using a like it, it just lo- it looked like of course she's going to end up injuring herself mm-hmm. or having some overuse injuries because she was not performing it properly. Right. Okay, this is an exercise really generating um, the power from your hips. Mm-hmm. So I'll put in the show notes. I'll go and scowl to. around because in the fat loss code we're going to be adding instructional exercise for all this stuff oh, cool. this year. Cool. All right, but just for people to just be able to grab out there on YouTube. I'll search around and find a good sure. instructional video. But if for we that. can get it from you, yeah, of course, we would of prefer course. to. Hear. <laughs> so kettlebell swings, that's number seven. And see, something like that, you can't like really warn them once they're started. Either you'll get hurt or you can hurt them. Hey, no, 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 not like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, so next up on our list of top 15 ways to do HIT training for fat loss, number eight is circuit training using the steel clubs. So the steel clubs, this is another great tool from on it on it.com forward slash model this is something that i have one in my office (laughs) i have one at home in my basement and i'll just go and work with that bad boy i mean i absolutely love it and so what it is it's it was a tool that was used you know thousands of years ago the persian army in training for battle Mm. you know and so it's it's basically it's shaped like a club but it's heavy so somebody might see it and i've had this happen somebody will see and they're like oh what is it and they'll you know, it's kind of like they try to pick up Thor's hammer. <laughs> I was just going to say, right? Thor. <laughs> and it's, 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 so it has this weight, but it's unevenly distributed, right? So it's very difficult for you to kind of create that neuro connection, muscular connection. But once you get it locked in, it's, it's pretty, pretty simple to just be able to hold it. But then we do exercises with it. So a great um, kind of circuit that we were doing, and I actually posted this video on my Facebook page. Mm-hmm. And by the way, I know I'm late to the game on social media, but <laughs> holler at me 
<laughs> at Sean Model on Twitter. Mm-hmm. So S H A W N Model. So at Sean Model, one word. At Sean Model on Instagram and on Facebook forward slash the Sean Model. All right. Mm-hmm. You can hook up with me there so you don't miss out on cool stuff like this. But so <laughs> I posted the video showing me doing the club swing. So I was doing the club swing. So it's like a kettlebell swing. Mm-hmm. So a club swing right into a squat. Yeah. So you're going to put the club right over your over your shoulder and you're going to do the squat. And then I went from that that um, exercise combination right into lunges with a front press. So you're doing a lunge in addition to holding this like 25, 30 pound oh, weight wow. unevenly distributed out in front of you. It's very difficult. Um, yes. You know, and so at the end of the video, you see I'm like, I'm <laughs> screaming a little bit, you know, but, <laughs> right. and that's not my style, but it was very, very Intense. difficult. Yes, you know? it sounds and like I it. felt this incredible energy, like for the next two days after doing this sure, training sure. session. And your body said, whoa. This so is something that's else. another thing, circuit training <laughs> using the steel club. So that's number eight on the top 15 ways to do hit training for fat loss. Number nine, and this one is, again, have body, have exercise. Uh, this is sprawls, a.k.a. burpees, oh. a.k.a. up downs. But here's the thing. I got to put this huge caveat. Your form. Mm-hmm. I, see, I see professionals, fitness professionals, with their videos on YouTube, and it's just after they're tired, they start breaking. Like, they're doing the up part, and their hands are, like, way out in front of them. They look like they're dying, Yeah, you know, because it's pr- it pretty difficult. Surreal. But if you can't maintain your form, either don't do this mm-hmm. or know that that's when you're done. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm. So I don't think that this is necessarily – this isn't for everybody. Mm-hmm. But this is something that, again, if you have a body, it's pretty effective for getting that metabolic change that we're talking about. Mm-hmm. All right? So – no sprawls. offense to any headless people. I mean, bodiless people. <laughs> you said if you have a body. That reminds me of the the head detective <laughs> right. from In Living Color. Do you remember that? Right. Oh, my God. Come on. Oh, um, God. Hetty Murphy. <laughs> you headed in the wrong direction. We could go on and Hetty on. Hetty Kruger. All right, so burpees. All right, and, th- and I want to oh, share gosh. you guys uh, uh, with you guys a strategy, so... What we can do, there's different variations. Um, mm-hmm. You can do something called ascending and descending sets of burpees combined with push-ups, for example, or pull-ups. So there's a lot of people who have been sharing videos doing burpees along with pull-ups. So they do a burpee, they'll jump right to the pull-up bar and do a pull-up. We're going to talk about burpees plus push-ups. Okay, so ascending and descending sets. So what that is is you start with five burpees. We'll do a five to one. So we start with five burpees, one push-up. Okay, and then immediately you go, after you finish those five, and then do that one push-up, you go right to the burpees again. You do four burpees, two push-ups, okay? Then the next one, you do three burpees, three push-ups, and then it reverses, okay? So until you get completely reversed and you're doing one burpee and five push-ups, mm-hmm. okay? So that's mm-hmm. ascending and descending sets, okay? So that's, that's just fun. one strategy to mix it up and to do some different stuff with the burpees. Great so idea. Now let's move on to number 10 on our list of the top 15 ways to do hit training for fat loss. Number 10 is uh, ladder training, okay? L-A-D-D-E-R, and ladder training. Ladder. Mm-hmm. So there's many ways of doing this as well. I'm going to give an example. Choose three exercises. So for this example, we'll use lunges, push-ups, and jump squats, okay? So what you'll do is you're going to do 10 reps of each exercise back-to-back, okay? 10 reps of lunges, 10, 10 reps of push-ups, 10 reps of jump squats back-to-back. Mm-hmm. Then you're going to rest for 15 seconds, then you're going to do nine reps of each exercise back to back. Okay. Then rest 15 seconds, mm-hmm. maybe 20 seconds. Okay. So just pick your rest time. Stick to it. Okay. Then the next round, you're going to do eight repetitions of each exercise back to back until you move all the way down the ladder okay. to zero. Okay. So that's the ladder training. Mm-hmm. All right. That and sounds like fun. It's another one. Again, add some spice to your workout, it but it's highly effective. And wow, this is some hit training here. Yeah. But this is going to be working more of the intermediate Muscle fibers, okay? So uh, that's number 10. Let's move on to number 11 on our list of top 15 ways to do HIIT training for fat loss. Number 11 is the battle ropes, okay? <laughs> battle ropes. So these are these big, thick ropes that some people are walking by at the gym. It's just like, oh my, what is, it? no, what is it? You know, they see it, it's just like, pineapples. You know, it just, it doesn't make any sense, but these are great for doing HIIT training, and this is a great way to do HIIT tra- hit training using your upper body. Okay. Right? So yeah. the battle ropes, they're, they're weight, they're, they're heavy, they're heavy ropes, and I'm just going to share, and again, if you don't know about what they are, um, just do a little Dr. Google, mm-hmm. and you can check out some of these exercises, but 
Um, three exercises that I particularly love for doing HIIT training with the battle ropes is the double wave. Okay, so basically you you've got uh, the rope in each hand and you're waving your arms up and down. Right. Whipping. No, that's no. coming up. Oh, it's not whipping. It's, it's just a waving, wave. Okay, right? I got you. The second way is the alternative wave. So you're going to do one arm at a time, alternating up and down, but this is going to go quickly. Again, we want to do this fast as you can with good form. Okay. That's the key. Okay, that's the key because we want to force that metabolic shift. We want to force that hormone secretion. And then the third way is the power slam. That's where you're going up and you're actually slamming it down. Okay. So those are my three favorite ways. ways. There's a lot of different variations that you can use with the battle ropes, but... Really great tool for that. Nice. And they have that as well over at onit.com forward slash model. You can get the battle ropes. You said for all of our high performance needs. So let's move on to number, what number are we at? We're now? on 12. 12. Mm-hmm. We're almost there, guys. Right, right. So number 12 in the top 15 ways to do hit training for fat loss. Number 12 is weights plus sprints. Okay. <laughs> so this is something that I used to do quite a bit where I'll do a set of a particular exercise and then I'll go and run. Or then I'll hop on a bike or then I'll hop on a rower and sprint for a while. So maybe I'll I'll do uh, 10 repetitions of pull-ups or weighted pull-ups in my case Mm -hmm. to really do it. Something that challenges me to even get to 10. So I'll do that. Then I'll hop over and do a sprint for, you know, 30 seconds on the bike, right? Then maybe I'll rest 30 seconds and I'll do it again, okay? So you can combine weightlifting with sprints <laughs> all right so that's another fun way to do hit training as well mm-hmm. all right so that's number 12 number 13 uh, you know what i love about this is that it's really given your body an opportunity to get down you know to really move and be and function in all its various abilities yeah. that is really cool it's a kindness to how your body's designed to move it's yeah. exciting exactly oh i love that you're saying that <laughs> So, and I I want everyone else to feel the same way. You know, take these tools. There's there's like a menu Mm -hmm. to choose from and just apply the stuff. See what (laughs) sticks for you. Have fun. And okay, so that's number 12, right? So Yeah, I'll dig that one. So that's number 12. Number 13 on a list of 15 top ways to do HIIT training for fat loss. Number 13 is to do medicine ball work, (laughs) right? And by the way, I recommend using the soft medicine ball for the exercises that I'm going to talk about. Because you don't want to use a medicine ball that you slam down and it jumps back <laughs> right, and punches you in the face. <laughs> if you do, go ahead and put your camera up so we can. That's right. You know, Add it to that, the epic fails. The epic fail videos. videos all right? So <laughs> soft medicine ball. All right. Mm-hmm. So a couple of exercises that you can do here. And by the way, um, well, let's just talk about it first. So one of my favorites is the wall ball. So basically you're going to do a squat with the ball. And again, good position, good form. And you're going to do a squat, and as you, as you drive up, you're going to push the ball up onto the wall. You know, you're going to basically throw it up, and then you're going to catch it. You need to catch it softly, so when you're going to kind of catch it on the way as you're going back down. All right. Again, if you're not experienced with this, give it a shot. Mm-hmm. But if you can, get some instruction on how to do it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So wall ball. So basically, this is a squat. This is like a thruster. What I was talking about earlier, where you go right from the squat with the dumbbells right into a press. That's called a thruster. Mm -hmm. So this is a thruster where you're actually thrusting up and you're throwing that ball, and then you're going to catch it on the way down. So you can do, you know, maybe 20 seconds on, 20 seconds off, or you can do it by reps. You know, there's many variations. And another great one is the ball slam. Okay, so using a ball slam. You're not going to be able to do this at Planet Fitness, all right? <laughs> right. So I'm just going to make because that little caveat said, right if now. If you throw it, the alarm goes off, and right. you're dead. You're going to get surrounded by people who are very <laughs> right. non-threatening. That's right. All right? They're going to ask you nicely to leave. That's right. So wall, <laughs> ball slams. So mm-hmm. again, I'll put um, I'll find a, a video Finally, instructional yeah. with mm-hmm. this one because you can do a lot wrong with this. So, and it's, but it's very one. intense when you're picking that ball up and slamming it down. You're going over and over again. And it's one of those things that it kind of feels very primal. Mm -hmm. You know, it feels like something that (laughs) my body's been wanting to do, you know. Yeah, yeah. So that's another one is uh, soft medicine ball work. And there's so many different exercises that you can use with the the medicine ball. As with all this stuff, I'm just giving a place to look to do your HIIT training. All right, so let's move on. We've got two more. All right, two Mm -hmm. more. I mean, this is exciting. I feel like Mm -hmm. we're on a treasure hunt. So number 14 (laughs) on our list of the top 15 ways to do HIIT training for fat loss. Number 14 is to lift Heavy weights. Mm. Lift heavy weights. So when how is that heavy. how is that even hit training, Sean? Is the, probably the question. Uh-huh. Well, lifting heavy weights, 
uh, when we talked earlier about the muscle fiber types, mm -hmm. right? So when we're talking about the muscle fiber types, the ability to generate power, mm -hmm. right? That velocity, uh, the ability to uh, fatigue very quickly when you're lifting very heavy weight. So I'm talking about deadlifting, doing a five sets of five repetitions or five sets of one repetition where you can't do more than one rep, <laughs> right? And by the way, again, this comes with the caveat of make sure you've got good coaching on mm -hmm. this stuff. But when you're lifting very heavy weights, that's a form of high intensity, high intensity interval training because your rest time is going to be there as well. So you're going to rest. You're probably going to take more rest in between doing these heavy lifts so you can come back prepared to do the next set. Okay. Okay. So when you're lifting these heavy weights, you're also going to get some se sequential recruitment of the muscle fibers. So you're probably going to burn through your all of your type 2 muscle fibers, A, B, and X. Wow. Okay? <laughs> yeah. So it's really effective way, and this is why this is so great for fat loss. And people are in fear of lifting heavy weights, especially mm -hmm. a lot of women. But we're transitioning out of that fear because they feel like if I lift heavy weights, I'm going to get big and bulky. When mm -hmm. in fact, bodybuilders are lifting lighter weights mm -hmm. than they can actually do for lots and lots of reps. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's trying to look for that hypertrophy. Mm -hmm. Right? We're not talking about that. And by the way, lifting weights does not make you big. Donuts makes you big. Okay, <laughs> right. lifting weights lifting does not make you big. Does. Food is what makes you big. Mm -hmm. And for the for the women out there, we're going to break this fear today. Mm -hmm. Most guys are trying hard to put on size, and they cannot do it. All right? They're taking, like, weight gain 5,000 shakes right. two times a day. Right. You know, waking, setting an alarm, waking up and eating bananas. You know, whatever <laughs> yeah. it takes to try to put on size. But it's very difficult. So mm -hmm. if you're in the percent of a percent of a percent of women who have the genetic capacity to put on size, sure, you might want to be careful mm -hmm. with this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But... That is so rare. Most mm -hmm. of the women who you see that are kind of um, maybe, I don't want to make it inflammatory how I'm saying it, but just very robust and, and kind of they look overgrown, right? Mm -hmm. they're, they're very muscular. Mm -hmm. Chances are they're taking something. Mm -hmm. You know, if they're, if they're shaped like a guy, mm -hmm. chances are they're taking some, some guy type hormones. Mm -hmm. Now, that's not true for everybody. Right. There are some women right. who are very just genetically gifted and strong, and that's right. the way it is. Right. But... Most and I want women them on my team. Most women. <laughs> I'll pick them first. <laughs> most women do not have anywhere near the genetic capacity to to grow that big. Okay. You know, it's really the food that you're eating. Mm -hmm. So if you're going and you're deadlifting five by fives and squatting five by five by ones <laughs> and you know doing bench press, heavy bench press, all this stuff, and then you're eating like it's your full time job, eating like eight thousand calories a day of like ding dongs, <laughs> like honey. You call me honey bun early. <laughs> I got to throw that out there and just and, and high fiber cereal. It's going to be ugly. You, you <laughs> know, you're going to be gassy and, yeah, and, and yeah. of course, slamming whey protein and all mm -hmm, this stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's really about the nutrition, mm -hmm. which is what we talk about mostly on the show. But eliminate the fear. Your body, your, gen your genes expect you to lift heavy things. So now I realize what a compliment that was not. So can I call you my chia kale chip instead of my honey bun? <laughs> chia kale chip. I'll yeah, be that. That's I'll be that. And that's <laughs> That'll do. <laughs> Lynchia kale chip. <laughs> you so crazy. You so crazy. All right, so that's number 14 is to mm -hmm. lift heavy weights. Okay. And we're definitely going to come back to that many times in our in our episodes. We've got some amazing shows coming up this year. So excited. Yes. So excited. So that's number 14. Let's go ahead and wrap things up. We got number 15. Mm -hmm. You're gonna love this one. Number 15 on our top 15 ways to do hit training for fat loss. Number 15 is play. Play. Okay. This is probably the the best form of high intensity training. So this can be something you know where your basketball is a great example. You're going all out for certain plays and certain plays. You're kind of backing off and you're mm -hmm. getting in position. All this stuff. It's a natural kind of ebb and flow of you doing high intensity and low intensity. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Basketball ultimate frisbee is another one that's becoming more popular. Uh, so you can get out there and play some ultimate frisbee, flag football, soccer, tennis, soccer. <laughs> right. Now, if we talked about earlier, we could play freeze tag. Yeah. You know. <laughs> right. Or TV tag. Come on, freeze me. That's right. That's great. You know. <laughs> touch me, touch me. So there's so many different ways mm -hmm. of, of doing this, but just getting out and playing. Yeah. You're going to be getting your hit training in like that, and you, you and you get away from all the the mind stuff involved in it. And get more into that more childlike mind, yeah. you know, and being free to play. And and, and play is healing. Yes, it know? is. All so. the way around. Quick question. So we've got these. How often do we do these in a week? Great. Absolutely great question. Mm -hmm. I personally recommend no more than twice a week okay. in doing HIIT training. Because, again, this should be so 
metabolically taxing and 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 the hormonal impact that you have on your body, you don't need to do it that much. You sure. gotta give your body time to recover. So then between those days. You can do your 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 weightlifting, you mm-hmm. can do you can do um of course lots and lots of walking. Sure, but you're saying you're not saying like do them Tuesday and Wednesday. You're talking No, it's some... spread them out. Okay. So maybe Monday you lift and then Tuesday you do hit training, Wednesday you're off, mm-hmm. Thursday you you lift, Saturday hit training. Okay. So something like that. I love it. Right? Mm-hmm. And by the way, so I've got strategies like this in the fat loss code and uh, make sure that you're a member of the fat loss code program. Yeah. Okay. So it's the fat loss code.com. And in it this year, again, this year we're adding in uh, video trainings and progression videos for all of these things we've covered today. Love it. So it's going to be incredible and get in now you know, there's already hundreds and hundreds of people in the program, but get in now so that you get access to this stuff as it comes out. Mm-hmm. Plus the most powerful, high quality. You're going into the classroom with me, yeah, training on nutrition. And it's just it's just a great program to have. The Model and Health Academy. <laughs> yeah, we're just going to keep pouring more and more into it because I'm really passionate about leading leaders, you know, yeah. helping leaders. And I, I don't want you to be as good as me. I want you to be better than me. Mm-hmm. You know, so giving you everything that I got, if I know it, you're going to know it. Yeah. And so that's what that hub is for me. So everybody, thanks so much for tuning into the show today. I hope that you got a lot of value out of, of this. Of course. And make sure to share this with any and everybody that you know. Because yeah. sharing is caring, baby. Yes, it is. Go out there and hit it. All right, go and hit <laughs> it. All right, take care, everybody. Talk soon.